Bring a piece of bread. Nick doesn't ask, but I can tell that he's hungry. I was like, from this moment on, I'm gonna make sure you eat. It's all about the way you carry yourself and who you feed, and you can get whatever you want. Another inmate tells me there was a shank in the dorm. And I go and I tell Nick, like, yo, word is getting around that there's a shank in the dorm. You know, just giving you a heads up. I kind of, I kind of pushed, kind of pushed Nick to handle it. He was like, okay, because I feed him. Where's it at? You fuck with somebody trying to hurt you for it, bro. Let me get it. Because if they try to put me on the door, there's a fool around the defender or something. But unfortunately, that didn't work. So I have to take care of it now. So I go up there and. Show them a wooden shank you made. Who's that from? You got room stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got room Give me the boomstick, bro. Right. Give me the boomstick. Give me that. You dumb, bro. I just told you. Give me. Nah, chill, chill. Get up, stop. Get up, stop. The moment I see that shank, the size, half the size of my arm, I take it. It look like a damn sword, like Buffy the Vampire Slayer type. Yeah. Yeah. Brought it downstairs. Broke it up in my room. Threw it in the garbage. <laughs> So I'm happy I got that out. I got that out the door. How do you really make that? I don't, I don't know. The goddamn I don't know, I don't know, but. Yeah, two of them, Eight. Now, somebody came to me and said, hey, Carlos, he has a second one that I didn't know about. Hey, you got another one, get out of here. You got another one? Get the out of here right now. You got another one? Why are people saying you both got the There's just certain things you come with. That right there jeopardizes everybody in this room. You understand that? You understand that? Then I don't That's something you don't do. I don't care what you say, you're gonna grab that bed and you're out of here, bro. And if you don't wanna get out of here, you're gonna have to catch the bed. You're gonna catch the bed with me. That's, that's, that's on my, that's on my, that's on my kids, bro. You know what I mean? I told him, you're gonna have to catch a fade with me. That means you're gonna have to fight me. I'm telling you, bro, when the done, if you got another one, get that out of here right now. There's a little one too. Where's the little one? You got me, man. I can't tell you what you're gonna do. Give me that one. Bye, guys. Look out. Bro, where you going, bro? He's gonna go out there and tell them, then we'll go get shoot down. Go. We really need to handle it ourselves. He's not needing the room, bro. He's got, he's got a head one on him. He's gonna go out there and tell them, then we're gonna get sick. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I respect you. Respect you. Hold on. Come on, chain gang. Respect you, Mayo. What do you feel? Put his ass up. Life is like a game of chess. I think before I move. I got pawns. I move my pawns before I'm gonna move the king. Nick already knew, like, he had to do what he had to do. When you're oppressing people, when you're hurting those who I with that I call my family, you're hurting me. I will not be oppressed. You know, I don't want to fight, but I will. Uh, 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 but... <laughs> 
If you stay here, you're gonna get your ass beat. I said, you're gonna hit the door. That means you're gonna get out. We're gonna pack you up and you're leaving. He didn't want to leave. He was like, future, I'll catch the fade with you, I'll fight you, but I'm not leaving. No, I'm not going on the door, bro. I'm not going on the Little does he know that I have enough respect in the dorm that once anybody hears that, they're gonna step up and take the fade for me. Nick took it upon himself to, to step in on his own free will. I feel bad, but I try to tell him, life is like a game of chess. Think before you move. Yo, you got it. How the hell you gonna talk? Now I gotta see if I can get Nick back, because that's my boy. Everything okay? What? I don't want to hold up. You owe some cookies? Yeah. Hey, Sean. How many cookies do you owe How many cookies does he owe you? We got first deal, Tommy. First deal. Somebody else. Man, if you owe me, please get that, man. I play. I like Stokes owed Deshaun five cookies. If you don't want to pay, whatever, whatever, you had a deal locked in, you're going to honor that deal. And I'm going to stand up for what's right. Stokes, me and him made a deal. He was supposed to be giving me some cookies. What happened was he didn't want to pay up. You know, Carlos steps in and trying to defend me, you know, he's telling him you're taking advantage of me and all that. But you can't be like a man, and you need to stick with that. You did. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. You got that big ass there. He can't be like a man. No, he can serve this right now. He didn't even open his clique. As soon as he opened his clique, oh, he's just like, can I get five CDR? And I give him five back. So then he asked him for the clique, and he said, no, you a man. We all were in the room, bro. You asked him for five clickies. Dallas was trying to take up for Deshaun in that instance. Like, he was just letting them know, like, y'all, y'all are wrong for trying to use Deshaun and taking advantage of him. Dallas and Stokes started arguing with each other. And Deshaun didn't like the fact that Stokes was yelling and talking to Dallas. He got upset because that's his friend. Dallas was like, man, I told you it's pretty much over with. And they kind of went back and forth. And then that's when Deshaun was just fed up. I guess all of the emotion that he had since he's been here just came into that one moment. And he jumped up and hit him with that Mario punch real quick. <laughs> Why did you punch Stokes in the face? Because since I've been there, everybody just wanted to yell and yell and yell. Nobody wanted to, you know, actually get to fighting. Everyone just keep going yelling at each other. So uh, I punched Stokes in his face. But he's just not doing that, though. Oh, man. When I saw Deshaun swing and hit Stokes in the face, 
I was shocked, but immediately I jumped up and grabbed Deshaun because I really didn't want Stokes to fight back. I run him upstairs and I pretty much tell him like, yo, you can't be doing that. But then I, I gave him some dap because I was proud of him in, the, in that moment as well because he just stood up for himself. What's up? That gave him some respect. And uh, I was happy because that's my boy. Stokes wanted to fight Deshaun. I was like, you're not going to fight Deshaun. If you want to fight somebody, you're going to go in the cell with me. No ifs, ands, buts about it. You want to fight? Do something. I think Stokes didn't retaliate because he knew he probably would have got jumped. He knew everybody had Deshaun's back. That's called the big boy move, but guess what? I need you to watch your own back right now. Like, I'm, I got you, but I need you to be aware and be surrounded around. Deshaun definitely has a, a team around him who wants the best for him. Everybody loves Deshaun. Harder. That's the first time I ever punched somebody. I felt, you know, I felt good. Nobody, I was happy. I was proud of him. Hey, bro, why you just punch him, bro? I'm playing cards and. I hear Dallas yell that Thumper smacked Deshaun. Messing with Deshaun, Deshaun's youngest person in the dorm. Hey, Nick was yelling at him, just saying, you know, he shouldn't be messing with Deshaun. Please punch me. Please punch me. I smacked him in his face. If you want to hit somebody, he should hit me. You know, hit somebody's going to fight back. Decided that he was gonna fight Nick versus fight me. That with Thump was just a little stick up for little bro because we're the same age. Because he's 18, you feel like you could pick on him, but I've called you a bitch in your face so many times, you ain't done to me. I hate when people try to bully somebody. So when I helped Deshaun, I try to go back to like, again, when I was younger, you know, there was a lot of times I felt like I was bullied and I was pushed around and I didn't do anything. And we're in a place where people will pick on him or they'll try him. There's a few people who still have his back and wouldn't let anything happen to Deshaun, but he needs to toughen up. Like it's, he's 18 now, it's time for him to take those steps to becoming that man that he should be.
Kim and Leslie are saying something like, Kim says, you're not supposed to be up here. I don't know what was said, but I'm like, what is going on? What are they doing? Kim grabs Leslie's hair and just starts pummeling her like, her head is literally going back and forth, hitting the railing, hitting her fist. My main concern was Leslie getting her head just constantly beat and no one is intervening. Like that could be some trauma to her head and to her brain. And Miss Pippins, I feel like she kind of let it go on. She was just standing there. <laughs> Kim could have killed Leslie. She could have threw her off the balcony. She could have threw it on the steps. <laughs> So I pull Leslie down, and the others pull Kim, Kim back. And from that moment, everyone had to lock back. Bye, Kim. See you soon, baby. <laughs> Let that girl get her ass whooped. Nothing was like, I ain't in that. I'm calling somebody for help. I'm breaking out. I feel that anybody that puts on a uniform and accepts the authoritative position of being a DO should be physically fit and know what to do in case a fight breaks out. I don't feel like any of the DOs are uniform to those set of standards, and I feel like that should be corrected. Nothing to lose is not the ones to play with. So far, general population is better than segregation. The only complaints I really have is what they decide to watch on TV for the most part, but I mean, that's something I can get over fairly quickly. Deshaun, he's a 17 year old kid, and just hearing his story kind of broke my heart immediately. He's here for shoplifting. His bond to get out was only $150, but he's still here. I was 17 and I was dumb at 1.2. You know, we all deserve a second chance, no matter what we've done. You got no, no dad around there? Um, um, her boyfriend? Yes. I had a dad. Yeah. That's why you're here, Mr. Billable. Crazy. my story, boy. My childhood was frantic because I didn't have a father myself personally. Growing up and not having that, it was just, it sucks, man. And I struggled with that more than anything in my life. Even though my actions put me in prison, his neglect led me there. People don't understand the importance of having like a fatherly influence, you know? There is no way around it. There's over 60% of people in prison didn't have a father. That's a bad statistic. There needs to be another influence in people's lives. And that's my goal. So if I can just be an example for anybody, I believe my mission will be complete. Every single day that I'm here, you know, I feel like I'm gonna try to do something positive for somebody else. I got $75 for you to get out of here. You mind going with us $75? That's it. His bond was $150, and when I heard that I wanted to pay his bond, I told him that I was going to get him out of jail. Some other guys also heard the conversation, and everybody said they wanted to contribute. So we're supposed to call his mom to see if we can bond him out. You think you got a promise not to do He's young, and he just has to learn. But I believe he has a better chance to stay out than come back. You can come back in here while I'm here, I'm gonna beat his ass. That should be 18 years old. You can look at yourself, don't you? That's why I heard that. Yeah. That's a very big cake. Do y'all need the expert to come over there and teach y'all something? These guys are here inventors. These are the Albert Einsteins of the culinary world. 
I'm just taking off the icing on the honey bun so we can add it to the top of the cake, man. Taking the honey bun, putting it in yeah, the yeah. dinner cakes, and he's gonna mash it all together. He took some yuzu bars, put it in the bag, and basically dip in the hot water and melt it. We're melting the yuzu. Yeah. Ooh. You gotta play around, get get the ingredients right before you uh, start showing off your your skills. <laughs> <laughs> Bon appetit. <laughs> it's Deshaun's birthday, and we offered to bond him out. But, yeah, um, so... Apparently, his mom said no, because she had to be the one to sign him out. Maybe, you know, his mom feels like he needs tough love, or that he needs to sit back here and just really learn a lesson. So you need to figure out a, a nice life change, man. Really. So do I do like teach yourself how to fight? It's not about that. How about you just teach yourself how to stay out of trouble and do the right thing and become a man? You know what I'm saying? Self-dependent. Nobody will give you a chance. So we're giving you a chance now. He's just honestly just lacking experience and just knowledge. I mean, he probably doesn't even know where to start the small things that you need to actually get a job, and then from getting a job, how you save your money properly. Listen, I don't want just any job. That's your problem. What job do you want? What job do you want? You don't even have a GED. Let's start there. All right, good job. Yeah, if you go home with a GED, my mom, what do I do? I was back there. I did something, made something myself. And there's so much I feel like Desan still needs to learn, so I'm just trying to really instill anything that I know that can possibly help him whenever he gets home. And there's so many options to go out there and do the right thing. Again, I don't want to hear that bad background as an excuse, none of that You can go out there and make a way. I am completely invested in Deshaun right now. He wants to do better, like I can see it in him. He just needs some kind of guidance. This is a, literally a lesson that's gonna turn into a whole blessing if you do it the right way, man. And that's what it's about, if you've got to do it the right way. Deshaun is the reason I'm on 60 Days In. Bull Rider, he let my bunkie, Icky, Read a book. Icky was like, I'm gonna give him something for letting me read the book. You give him what? Like what? Nah, don't do that. Don't do that. You set yourself up for failure. Nah, I'm gonna show him Nah, that. My advice to Icky was, don't give him nothing because he has everything he needs. I was ready to get it on with him, you know, out of, out of the disrespect. Hey, look, calm down. You get Ain't nobody getting in trouble. What you trying to say, homie? I was like, don't tell me to chill. You don't talk to me like I'm your son. So my defenses went up real quick. You really trying to say I'm going to get into trouble? Yo. Bro, you here for three months. That don't mean nothing, bro. That don't mean nothing, bro. It's all smart. 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 It's all I'm not going to be disrespected, and I already told you guys from the beginning, somebody steps out of line, I'll put them back in line. But what really stopped me was I seen his lips shaking and his body was shaking. So I already knew he didn't want to fight. I'm not in a jail mentality. You got it. I'm in the jail mentality. Then you gotta kinda snap away from that with me, cause I don't look at you like that. We and this together, bro. You got it, you're right. And, and, and look, I will apologize. No, I'm good, good, bro. good. I'm not gonna be punked, and I'm gonna stand 10 toes. Hopefully you guys pull me out before it leads to that, but at the end of the day, I hope the, the sheriff understands that, listen, I'm not gonna be punked. That's one thing I'm not gonna do.
just an entire door, man. I don't get why they do that, or this yeah, they gotta move his ass somewhere else. I don't want to call nobody crazy, but that's how he's the vibes he's giving off. He's he's like right below me. They don't have a proper place to put this guy. And once the inmate is a disturbance, not only to the other inmates, but to officers as well, they're supposed to do something about that. That's up for his ass tomorrow. I promise you I do. My whole hour I'm kicking his ass. You gonna get a taste of what the got me feeling all day. You do the see your back city. There's a inmate who lives right below me who constantly yells five, four, three, two, one all night long. So I went straight to the cell. I was like, if we can't get no sleep at night, you're not gonna get no sleep in the daytime. Get up! I'm, I'm a full-blown inmate again already. Why do you think it's going to give us up all night? You ain't getting no sleep as long as I'm out here. No sleep. None. Just stay up all day long. I can't sleep. You can't sleep. Yeah. yeah. You can jump all the inbound you want to, homie. They open this door and beat your ass, though. All right, y'all leave the lighter lock down. How you feel? How you feel? How come y'all let me keep up my phone line? There's nothing I can do about that. You're right here at the door. I can, I can help that. There's nothing I can do. His excuse, well, there's nothing that we can do. He's in the perfect place, and it's, they don't care. I can't sleep, you can't sleep. May I help you? Oh, uh, yeah, 410 saying she can't breathe. There is a lady that's upstairs that needs assistance. She's been asking for a couple hours. So she's complaining all day about she she can't breathe. I mean, she's having a hard time. Ooh. Can she come out? Uh, I, we can try to get her down here. Sam's <laughs> come out. It's crazy because she's begging for help that she's not getting. Okay, I'll let them know. There are medical issues every day. And when it comes to the officers and their response, there is no sense of urgency. It's like they don't even care about any of that. At that point, everyone was just in an uproar because once again, Erica needs medical attention. Okay, well, we got one up here that just had a seizure upstairs, and then she's down there. Okay. They just call the ambulance this bitch. That's what they need. Be careful. Sometimes it looks like Erica is just fainting. She's very frail. She doesn't eat. And she tries to eat, and she throws up. Because I'm hard-headed, we know that. In the beginning, I thought maybe Erica was being an attention seeker, but then I can't judge her because I don't know. When I was coming back from medical, I had to sit down because I felt lightheaded. She's falling out a lot. I'm not actually sure what's going on, but I just want for her to get help. They're on their way over here. Oh, 
It is crazy. Someone else suddenly sees it. Not only is she seizing, but other ladies are still waiting for someone to get her. It's a mess. I'm just terrified because I don't know what I can do. Someone's yelling, hey, lift her head up. Don't let her swallow her tongue. I mean, it is a mess. It was just unbelievable to the magnitude of which the nurse was being called. It's clear that they're short staff. The officer walks in and she has like this very nasty attitude about it. She still sees everybody back up. I only need like one person down there, okay? Help him die. Help him die. Each and every person in this cell, help him die. Up there with us, okay? Exactly. Okay, let us do our jobs, or you come out and do it better than we do. Go sit down, please. I cry because the conditions in this jail is horrible. They have no structure whatsoever. Everything is bad. Like, they're not taking anything serious. We had a seizure. She's starting to come out of it. She's starting to be a little more coherent. You need to control your breathing. Can you sit up on your own? That's right. On your own. Slow and steady. I definitely want to talk to the sheriff about this because right now, they don't even have control of the most minute cases in here. But I'm come down and check you out. I just don't want to be moved. Yeah, I understand that. You got a problem, man? I'm asking you, do you got a problem? Yeah, I got a problem. I asked you to use that hand phone card to load up, and you click the game. Yes. So I can use it. Say what? There's always something going on in general population. I don't care who was you. So what you want to do, man? Man, I just want to have a bathroom. I slept better in quarantine than I did at gym pop. That's a lot of that's going on, and it's gonna piss you off mentally. I don't give a. I don't give a. Ball. He wanted to fight this guy, John. I don't even know why. I don't mean neither. I'm telling you, man. Come on. I break. Come on. Homie. You already a dope fiend, man. That's what I, I want to get you anyway. You a fiend anyway. You a fiend anyway. All right, come on. I want to get you anyway. Right, come in the shower. Come on. Bring your all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Man, ain't gonna lie, the guy John looks like a fiend because he's over there leaning like. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. He over there like. I'm just looking like he cannot really be about to fight this guy right now. He's, he really looks like a fiend. Like, damn, he looks like a dope fiend for real. You can't sleep comfortable in these situations. You're not scared, but it's still your safety as a man. You know, I got a wife and kids to go home to. It didn't seem like it was going to happen. I was wrong. Nothing is predictable here. I can't predict what's next. So I don't know who's going to fight or what's going to happen or what's going to happen to me. I don't know.
real jail environment, you will have officers telling inmates, hey, tone it down. Nobody watching. Immediately, I, I knew the inmates ran to jail. I mean, man, that's dangerous. You can count one spade just because I give you four books. Just because I give you four in a pop, you can count one out of the four spades. It's hard to get sleep with 25 guys in a room. All right, people. <laughs> and we made it off of seven o'clock. Card games get so intense, and nobody wants to lose their chips or their, you know, any type of commissary or canteen again. They don't want to lose it. What the I don't give a Ain't no damn state, no. It's your <laughs> Lambo, he's just like, man, drip. I was like, hey, I'm up get up there. Oh, I don't give a damn. Yeah. Trying to act like you, hard boy, bro. Pop would be a lot more peaceful if drip wasn't there, making all the noise all the time. You crazy as hell. You, you ain't going there, You, you ain't do nothing. You smoke. Come on, man. Drip is just the light of fluid on the fire. Oh, I'm really Drip looking for some entertainment. They resort to violence. I need my antennas to be up. I need to be aware, you know? Man, shut the up. Trinity Brown. Don't always stick my tongue out when I laugh. You always back up and stop shouting. Thank I always you. think I'm gonna shout when I laugh. Yeah, you are shouting and step away from me, okay? My face all in my ear. Wake up, start over. Tell me what you need to do. No, I don't need to. You need to step away from me. It's kind of calm for the first time in the pod, and then all of a sudden they get mad at each other for the smallest things. Since she's talking to me, I only talked to you for one. Yeah, but you were all up in my face, Bree. Yasmir is just getting agitated with Brianna because she's constantly talking. I mean, she's more boisterous, so she's an easy target. You got, you got problems. Girl, you got Everybody in this pod does not like you and has a problem with you, Bree. That's good. You don't care, so keep acting the way you act. That's why you can barely get money on your books, broke ass home. At least I got a family that you care. At least I got that. Family that actually cares. Yeah, my family actually does care. One thing, mom, make sure you learn from your
it started between Yasmin and Bree, and we ended up separating Selena and Bree. It, 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 it just didn't make any sense to me. I, I can't believe that situation escalated that bad. It, it saddened me. I can't even say them wanting to physically hurt each other is real because it went from a push to almost just grappling and wrestling. There was no real strong physicality to hurt someone. You know, again, trying to make a statement for what, to who, you know? What, what does it mean? What does it prove when you can risk spending more time in jail where nobody wants to go? My entire goal of coming on this program was to be some kind of example of change. So when I put up the flyer initially for the financial class, I actually wanted to find people who needed some kind of guidance in how to make money or having another hustle or just doing some positive stuff that hopefully can help them not come back. I didn't expect a lot of people to come, but we actually filled up the entire table. Deshaun was there, Nick was there. Um, even Thump was standing around the table as well. And I'm not gonna lie, like, it blew my mind. So what, what does wealth mean to you? Have money? What about you? Hey! And that's what it is for a lot of people. So one of the most important things when I say financial freedom, that doesn't mean you're rich as You know, wealth means something different to everybody else. I like this. You know what I'm saying? I like the way Darius goes about things. He's very smart. He knows what he's doing. You know what I mean? We're all here for something. The majority of it is probably money related. He knows how to make money. He knows how to inspire people to make money. And it's because a lot of us, they said, maybe we grew up without that father figure in our life, so we felt we had to get into the wrong <laughs> We never had that financial education. And he knows how to hustle. How you get money? I work with Jeff Bezos. The easiest <laughs> in my life I've ever done is become a reseller. A reseller? Yeah. I'll give you an example of that. We're gonna say this is a t-shirt that I found at Goodwill. It costs $2 for both of us. But somebody else might resell it for $10. I may not buy that item because I don't want a $7 profit margin. I'm gonna be a waste of my time. But for you, $7 can be perfect for you. But you can buy 20 of them items. Exactly. And then you can pay. Well, that, that's Anna, that's Anna. 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 That's what you wanna always look at, your profit margin. Is it worth it Damn. for you? And you don't need no money to start this. You have items in your house that you not using. Like the old video games that we used to play, PSP, PSP, PlayStation games, used items, all the way People were actually taking notes. They were writing everything down. So places to go shopping, where? Goodwill, DDs, Walmart, yep. 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 Facebook. And I was asking them questions like a teacher would, like, you know, what did I just say? Or, you know, what did you take from this? And people were really invested. Like, I have never oh. spent more than $20 on any item ever as a reseller. And in that moment, I, I was proud. Because just by their conversations with me, I know that some people will actually try to go take it with them. Appreciate you putting me on that, because that's the answer. That's where it's at, man. And I cannot wait to talk to the sheriff, because they need to have more programs like this. I'm about to talk to the sheriff. I need to put this, take all that crap and stand up and like, shield this child. Just break it down. Be a little easier, please. <laughs> Bull Rider was arguing with another inmate. It was a miscommunication from breakfast or something like that. Bull Rider was mad at him. Bull Rider, let's chill. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, You want to talk down on me? Then I'm going to disrespect you as well. I'll say, f out my cut. And then Thump was coming up the stairs like he was going to do something. What you doing? What you doing? What's up? Hey, there ain't nothing to see here, bros. Get your bitch ass off the step. Thump, he's just always in the middle of everything. And that that really that really ticked Bull Rider off. And that's when he went full force right towards Thump. Talk outside of your mouth, bitch ass. Come on over here. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, you bitch. Let's go. Bull Rider calls him as bitch. And right there, those are fighting words. I'm calling you out right now. You about thump, 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 thump. 
He kept on saying, thump, thump, thump. That means you fight. I don't see him doing that, though. And if he does, he's going to have a, he's gonna have one hell of a time with Bull Rider. In here, all you bitches. What's up? Bull Rider threatened to beat this guy up. So we got two, two out of hand. Let me handle that one. Nick and Bull Rider look out for each other. That got Nick mad. So he took it upon himself to step in on his own free will to address that. Thump always causing a problem in the dorm, always. And it just, it wasn't finna flow with me or anybody else in that dorm. Me and Bull are like me and Carlos. So it's like that right there pissed me off, period. Cause now not only you hurting mine, you are hurting me too. Thump is a gangster. So is Nick. So he had to do what he had to do. Nick was trying to fight him. He has that mentality of being in a gang and he wants to be do good, but when it comes to your issue, it's not my place. Nick is supposed to be the gang leader of our dorm, which just blows my mind, 18-year-old gang leader. Us black people, we don't have no leaders. We just chill and watch everybody else be crazy. What the f that ain't right, bro? Man, look. I wait on him to come out and tweet. Y'all didn't say that, bro. I will, bro. You said it. The incident popped off, and I, mean, I was going to fight him. And my dark side came out. <laughs> Me being an ex gang member, I understand, you know what I mean? Like, you want to prove yourself, but if you're going to sit there and fight and potentially catch an assault charge, it's not worth it, man. Like, calm down. I seen the 1040, which is a fight, took place. I went in and I said, stop fighting several times. They didn't apply. So, put out my OC spray and spray both of them. Obviously, you see that broke up the fight. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I've got the three here. Hey, what size jump we got? Uh, it says five bucks. We need five days jump. What size underwear? Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You good, man? Yeah. So, they'll both get moved due to the fight. We're just waiting for that guy there in medical to get out. And then that guy's gonna come to medical. Because whenever people fight there, they like have to get interviewed by medical. And then they'll go to D-Block for 
Lock down. Guthrie, grab a 5X jumper and 4X underwear. So they will be separated and they will go in D5, the disciplinary segregation. They will not come out or wreck at the same time. Uh, they won't have no communication. Hey, leave me alone, Judge. Hey, leave me alone. That's all I'm saying. Um, they have to be decontaminated and they're gonna open up with a shower. So the pepper spray that I spray can be washed out of his face. They should be bringing his new jumpsuit and new underwear. So after however many days, it's on the belt. She say they're gonna stay locked down. I'll say it's 25% possibility they may go back to population. <laughs> and you see in this, then when they're in that, most of the inmates know it as a turtle suit. It's meant for them so they won't be able to use anything to harm themselves. When I first came here, I went to the, what we call SEG, what we, what we call it the hole, but you know, to get a bit of understanding, segregation. We see people in turtle suits laying on the floor. People crazy, people laying in their urine, laying in feces. They really don't know what's going on, but this is where they put them at. This is where they hide them at. They hide them at jail. That's how they sleep at night with no mat on a hard metal bunk, with no sheet, no mat. No clothes. No, no green, clothes on. A green, a green, green suit plane. on, just laying there naked. That's how they punish you. Like, if you get into it too much with the staff, they'll take all your clothes from you. The safety smocks, also known as turtle suits, is made out of certain material where it's not easy to tear, bend, tear off any of them. We think they're going to harm themselves. We'll put them in the safety smock slash turtle suit. They're not trying to give their name when they come through booking. They'll come to D Block, Turtle Suit. If they don't complete the booking process, Turtle Suit. Turtle, turtle, turtle. Am I not turtly enough for the turtle? Club? Hey, yo, my first three visits here started out as a turtle suit visit. You're uncontrollable. They take your clothes and your blankets and shit. You're locked in that suit, and that's all you got. They treat you like an animal. They love the turtle suit, and in another jail, they don't give you no turtle suit, ma'am. That is not normal to have them locked behind the door like that for 24 plus hours. I removed the nurse hand while she was doing the COVID test. They thought something was wrong with me, I guess. They just sent me straight to the turtle room. They had me in a turtle suit, and I was like, oh my god, they racist here. It was scary, though. It was scary. Yeah. I'll never forget that. Oh. It'll break you because you don't want to sit there. Feeling degraded, no underwear, cold as hell, because it's very cold, and they'll do that to you. I'm telling this lady, I'm, I'm crying my heart out to her. Hey, I'm depressed. I need somebody to talk to right now. I'm very depressed. Oh, you don't want to go in a smart today. That's even worse. What? You gonna put me in a smart because I asked you to talk to me? Because I'm depressed? I walked through that door, the inmate instincts kicked in like, <laughs> it's about to get real. that came in with me, she's known here, King. So you look pretty popular in here. I'm in with the vet now. I'm finna find out how everything works here. I ain't got to talk to nobody but her. You done tired? I'm tired. But she went straight to sleep. Oh, God. Is she up? She sleep? Shake her ass. She doing bad. <sighs> <sighs> she <laughs> up. And somebody else coming in. What? She look like she about to cry. <laughs> I think I cried the first. Y'all about to get the third person. <laughs> 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 Just put the stuff right here. The guards added an extra girl to our cell. She's a young girl. Her name is. 
Bless her heart, little girl. She was playing on the internet, uh, made a video and told her boyfriend to shoot up a school. <laughs> I was shocked when she told me that. We're gonna be here for a long time, but that's the thing. I said, well, you can caught your ass a felony. That's like a terroristic threat, you know? Do you ever go out there? No, I just got in here today, too. Um, do we ever go out there? I wanna go out there, but I don't think we're gonna be able to go until we uh, quarantine they said for five days. Oh. So in five days, we're going to be in here looking at each other crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what I was like. Now y'all going to play this one. I can't wait to get out of this damn little stupid ass mm -hmm. <laughs> They make you quarantine because of the protocol for COVID. But to be locked up in that little room like that, I don't see how them girls do that for the first five days. I can't do this. This is crazy. Especially at nighttime. <laughs> then the girl that came in um, with me from the holding cell, King. Um. It's not bothering her. She not even here right now. She in La La Land. Oh, 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 Dita, Dita, give me my fuel, please. Oh, that's what it is. She's been coming down off her fentanyl high. Oh, God. And been moaning and sick and like jumpy and everywhere. I was just so shocked when she got on that toilet and it the way she did. I was just like, damn, these hoes ain't got no damn, no shame. Like, that's her house. You know, she's a fentanyl abuser. Like, she has. She, she she bangs, I asked her, she bangs her arms, you know? So it makes me feel uncomfortable because I don't know if she has anything or diseases. You should have someone here all night to give them whatever that helps them not moan and shake all night and, and get up and pee and on themselves all night. Like, I've never seen that before. That's my first time. I, that scared the out of me. Oh, man. I ain't not feeling that man and her withdrawals that she's going through, the shakes and the, the moaning and the groaning. That is is over for me. Like I just can't. Happy birthday. Happy old are you? My birthday. Well you didn't really eight. Everybody all got out their chairs, you feel me? We got it right here. I wanna get busted up. I want, I want, I want my nose, bro. Come on, let's get it. He talking reckless. He really just started I got some weirdos in here. Anybody want to hit? Damn, the stairs right there. Don't name. Know what pop be on some con. No, everybody know what's going on. Talking about who want to shoot one for his birthday? Who says that in this door? Nobody don't. None of that. When people have birthdays in there, some people would be mad. Some people would want to stay in the room. Feel you? This dude today want to be Mr. Big Dog. Yo, Yo, I'm still talking. Talk. You will never be a still game. Talk. Talk. Yeah. 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 I want to go there and just like sit down and shut up. But he just, he not shut up. Say your birthday. You talking good. As far as the gangs, if one goes, they all going to go. You know, it's not going to be a, a fair fight. All over the blood, then we try to roll over the G. I'm like, Saddam Hussein, you up, you going to get killed. You, you. He always talking. The tough guy talk, hey, you going to get beat up.
the gang's got to just exert some pressure on the situation just to remind everybody that they're there and they have some kind of coordinated power. He kept talking regular, so we did what we had to do and beat him. Then he was taunting them after it, which I thought was dangerous, and he's bleeding from the nose. I said another one, bro. I can't get another one. Watching it, it was kind of, you know, it's scary watching them fight, and it was like, dang, that's my roommate fighting. And, you know, I, I, I didn't want to be dragged in because we're roommates or anything like this. Oh, my nose bro. My nose ain't even broken. Oh, my <laughs> broken. Yeah, yeah, bro started popping off at the mouth. You know what I'm saying? Bro got happy on his birthday. Gave him some birthday lit. I want to play, man. The thing that took me off is somebody trying to tell you what you should have did. When I get mad, I spaz out. I have a military behind me, basically. Whatever I say, they're going to do. Whatever I do, they're going to do. That snap my finger. some of the ingenuity that the guys have in here. I mean, they can turn nothing into something in just a second. It's so neat, the things you see here. Like, it's talent. I mean, it really is. This little bit of these, chocolate chip cookies, he's going to make some dough. The water's going to make the dough. These guys get real creative, you know, being locked up. You find a lot of creative things to do. That's my narrator right there. Keep going, my guy. See a chance for that. We're learn something being incarcerated. If you had a mind, place it on top. It's colorful. It's colorful, too. I've never seen shit like that before. The cheese, ain't. There's a cheesecake right here. You know what I'm saying? Crumbling up. Don't judge me. <laughs> like that. <laughs> now, this is where your hands gonna play right here. I'm a certified chef. I love the cook. I love what I do. I know a lot of people eat with their eyes, so I'm all into my work, dressing my food. I work 
pushing up anybody. I want to. That's on blood. Rue is a big guy. Like, his arms fill up the uniform top. Like, he is a huge guy. I mean, I'm worried about him, you know, trying me. The next thing I know is Rue walked into a cell, took the student's commissary, and I was like, <laughs> I feel like, you know, he's about to jump me from my commissary items. No. Rue can have it. I mean, my life ain't worth a dollar or two dollars or whatever it is. I mean, I'm not about to get stabbed over some foolishness. That door is open, can't you see? Who on the Being in jail in the midst of this violent gang culture, it is disorienting. A big, you know, scary guy, I don't know his name, but he is taking people's stuff. I feel like this could become dangerous or problematic. it out and it literally heard like somebody was hitting their hand on a wall if someone takes you into a room they can beat you up and the officers aren't going to see it and that's extremely distressing immediately you can see Trey's nose was so swollen. Rue is a big guy. Trey, on the other hand, is bones and skin. And you got to give props to Trey for, for taking that beating like that and not even snitching, not saying a word. Monte decided he needed to uh, protect Trey. So Rue went into Monte's cell and uh, took the student's commissary. The guards asked what was going on, and Monte said that you know, they're about to jump me. Even I knew that wasn't good, that you are about to snitch on somebody. You could get murdered in here for something like that. Last phase, it took me about a week to be a pod boss. This time, two or three days. It's gonna be rare that an individual is gonna fight me one-on-one. -on -one. Champagne? I size him up, he sized me up. He the big dog in the pie, right? Until he met me. See, in my pod, I'm running stuff. And if Champagne owe me something, I can use that to my advantage. So uh, I gave him like four or five items. I said, here, boom. All right, you owe me. So, and now I got you. 
man. You're a tax man, man. I'm here to walk my man. I came here to Dallas, man. I got three seconds. Hey, little sunshine, I'll say. So I, don't, I gave you what? Two cookies? Yeah. A, a bun? Uh -huh. And something else. I gave Champagne like four items, and if he don't pay me back, you know, I could appear weak. I can't, I can't have a reputation like that in jail. I just gave you ice white like two days, like yesterday or two days ago. Hold on, who got ice white from? You got that from you. Me? Yeah, I want to say three. That's three. And I want to say I gave you, I want to say I gave you two, uh, two like. And uh, he was like, oh, nah, bro, I ain't going to play with you. I ain't going to play with you. I ain't going to play with you. I said, all right. I said, as long as you know. I said, when it comes time to pay up, you need to pay up. It's all new. I'm at <laughs> if I give someone some commissary and they don't pay me back, you know, I could appear weak. So I have to, you know, enforce some type of discipline. I got to do something to you, put on this show for everybody else who's looking. So store day come, right? So that means it's time to pay up. I see Champagne got his little bag. He got his items in there. So he walk over there. So mind you, people looking, right? People looking. So I got to act some type of way to make sure my name stay solid. So I'm saying, what we doing right here? You know what I'm saying? So I'm saying, what we doing? So I'm saying, bro, just rest bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm over here handling some business. So you you come in here, 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 you come it's Champagne, he definitely think he's big stuff. That's fine. But if it was a fight between me and Champagne, I would definitely put Champagne on ice. Come on, me and Champagne went in the cell. And I just back up, like, how we gonna play it, bro? I need me. Either two things, two things. Either gonna get up, I'm gonna stab you. One or two, straight up. How did this end with this deal? I got paid. Me checking him, putting him in his place in front of everybody, they like, oh man. Tony, yo, he checked champagne. I know what he'll do to me. Moving forward, we'll see what happens. Come on, you ain't came out this since you been here, boy. I ain't seen you out here, bitch. This guy named Cantrell started accusing Houston of touching his wife on the street before they even got locked up. The COs, they're oblivious. They just gonna do the bare minimum and you know, keep it moving. Houston came out, got his ponytail up and stuff. You gotta get some straight, man. Yeah, I know. At that point, uh, Contrell back off, but then he go to uh, Champagne's cell and talking to him. Contrell asked Champagne to do his dirty work for him and to beat up Houston. How much money you want? How much money you want? Who is it? The white dude. I'm going it all right now. I'll make that money. Easy money. I'm going it all right now. Yeah. Easy. I want you to hit that. fight five times, I went four, guaranteed. We're here with Robert, who is one of the most memorable participants in the program. Robert? Hey, Dan Abrams. Hey, Dan. Mr. Nice Robert. He said, please. Now, because of Robert's attitude during training, Tammy and Zach had their doubts about him completing the program. Let's take a look. Yeah. Yes, uh, how big is a TV screen in the day room? It is a 60 inch. 60 inch? 60 inch flat screen. Oh, thank you, taxpayers. What do you think about some of the questions that Robert's asking, Zach? Some of the questions he's asking are, I think, not serious. Like we say, you know, he's, he's smoking joke right now, but it's... it's... I, think, I think reality will come in once you're put in I'm, handcuffs. I'm kind of scared for you. 
<laughs> now, I understand that you guys actually had a bet about Robert? Yes, we did. Which was? I bet him to not last more than three weeks. Tammy gave him the benefit of the doubt. Which was a generous five weeks. And we're kind of excited to see how that played out. Robert, how do you feel about the fact that they doubted you from the beginning? I don't care if people doubt me. I could bail hay with the best of them, and there is not absolutely any quit in me. Uh, so anyone who questions my toughness, well, you're wrong. Robert, Tammy and Zach don't know what happened to you. Why don't you give them a quick summary? Yeah, I went to segregation. Uh, I was sick, and I was forced to drop out uh, after five weeks. You in the bed. So how did things, do you think, go for you with regard to other inmates? Because both Zach and Tammy were concerned about how you would get along with them. Well, uh, check out this handsome face, still intact. So the fact that you survived alive means that it went well with them? The visuals speak for themselves that I didn't have any problems with inmates. We're going to show you Robert's journey um, that led him to segregation. And Robert, you're going to hear for the first time what the inmates were actually saying about you. Oh, this is going to be real good. Yeah. Boy, I mean, shit is goofy as damn so much. You got the NFL Network here? Yeah. That came in and asked if we got the NFL Network. Too much doesn't add up. Yeah. Clean cut, no tattoos. Yeah. He's one of them. He's got Sean Blue's boss. Oh, and so let's I'm hitting it. I'm hitting it. Robert, after seeing the footage yes. and seeing what the inmates were saying about you, does it change your perspective on how they viewed you? No, because uh, I knew there was a little tension there from some of those guys. I took off my uh, uh, jump suit and kind of tied around my waist because I'm a pretty big guy. Because I thought that there's some guys out there that may want to fight me, and I use that uh, just in case. It's kind of like, well, if they did want to fight me, at least it looks like I'm in shape. Zach, any thoughts on Robert's behavior? There are a lot of thoughts that I have. Bring them on. Probably not a whole lot that I can really say and maintain my composure. It's very obvious to me that Robert took no thought for anyone else. He didn't take any thought of a larger goal than anything but his own. You're correct. And the fact that he's proud of that says all that needs to be said about him and his personality. <laughs> and as far as how the inmates felt about you in 3D, Robert, uh, when I got moved over there, there was a lot of talk amongst the inmates about the crazy guy who'd put the towel over the camera and how they all thought he was weird, they thought he was crazy, and if he ever did come back, what they would have done to him. Do you understand what it was like? Do you understand what I went through in there? It was your choice. I understand it was my choice going in, but I went in for a reason. So okay? did I. Yeah, to what? To, to sit there and laugh and joke and have a good time? I, I was incarcerated, I Robert. So was he I. He was incarcerated. No, you weren't. Well, what did I do for five weeks? Okay, five weeks. You sat in segregation, which no. is it's a ride. Pleasurable. It's You're a right, ride. You know yes. what? I could have done, yeah, by yourself. I like okay? that. I yeah. went, I had a brutal experience. I fought my entire way through to make it through to get out, to bring these gentlemen some positive feedback. That's what this is about. It's, this is no laughing matter. Captain Mables, why do you think he covered up the camera with the towel? Well, you know, you just watch some footage where, you know, inmates were literally speaking about possibly raping him. And he covered up the, he was scared. Allow me to interject here. What the inmates were saying, I didn't hear. You're, you're exactly right. You didn't hear what the other inmates were saying. So 
In the end, Robert, yes. you uh, did not stay in the program uh, for yes, 60 right. days. You opted out early. Let's take a look at what happened. Sure. Yes, sir, Robert, um, we, we've got what our perspective on segregation we need, um, but we need you to go back to, to another section. Finishing is so important to me. I know it is, but your health is very important to us. That's what I think we need to be focused on right now. This is the single most disappointing day of my entire life. I want to do this so bad. Seems clear the captain didn't believe that it was a real illness. Anyone who thinks I'm faking it, one, do they know how much medication I took, what type of medication I took, make your judgment after you gather the information. Robert's danced around many questions. He, when you ask him, he, he goes off on a tangent to try to lose face of what the question really was. You know, of interest, Robert, in the exit, you said you had an undiagnosed illness and now it was constipation. And when I talked to you in the exit interview, you were holding said it was all right here. And then it moved in the video to it was back here. It just makes it really suspect, that's all. Constipation is through here and could be the back. This was a flank pain caused by a severe strain, the doctor said. I eat healthy. Uh, Mr. Maple syrup, you wouldn't understand, but whenever you change your diet, things happen. Robert, nobody's been rude to you, so I don't think you should use the rude tones that you're using to the captain. He's calling me out. He doesn't believe me. He's calling me a liar on that. I'm sorry, but isn't there um, like x lax on commissary, if I'm not yes, mistaken? Yeah, Thank is. you very much. I'm pretty sure that regardless of what we say, you're going to keep talking in circles, so. Exactly. Right. To be clear, you are saying you wanted to go back to the general population after segregation, correct? I did say that. I wanted to go back to pod 3D. Uh, because once again, I didn't have problems with guys in pod 3D. So uh, while in segregation, Robert, you apparently wrote a letter to Captain Maples. Um, yes. Captain Maples, do you have yeah, do. the letter um, with you and will you read it? Oh, yeah. Mr. Captain Maples, firstly, I would like to apologize for my mistake in pod 3D. I am sorry for interfering with the camera. Secondly, I'm requesting to stay in H7 isolation. If you must move me back to general population after 30 days, I understand, as I don't have a choice. I just prefer to maintain a low profile, not cause waves, and be a model inmate. Sincerely, Robert Harris, number 235276. Yes, uh, I loved uh, the uh, meditation retreat down there for 30 days. It was sheer paradise. I loved it. I just presented a letter stating I want to stay in segregation. Um, there is all kinds of inconsistencies in his story. I don't, I, I particularly don't feel like arguing with him about it. Um, we, we didn't receive any valuable information from Robert. I, I would like to add the fact that I would like to apologize to Zach and Tammy because you guys took this serious and this, this is no reflection of what we think of what you did for us. And don't think that he's in the same boat as you guys. He spent three overnights in jail. It's appreciated. Before he went to segregation. So I want to say thank you to both of you. Yes, sir. Because it, it, it's a slap in your it's face. It's a slap in your face. <laughs> oh, man. Gabrielle. <laughs> the night the whole gas leak happened, I mean, I could tell that she was also attracted to me the way I was attracted to her. You get those, like, butterflies, and then, you know, it, it could happen. Who's to say that the amount of dust bunnies that are in here wouldn't spark up a flame? It could be potential death, and they'd have to so, remove us. As much beans they feed to somebody fart, and it'll start a fire. So. <laughs> She's extremely funny. She's extremely goofy. Like, I just absolutely adore and love her personality. Then next thing you know, I guess they fixed it, and they just took us back to our room. And then after that, we just fell asleep, talking fell asleep. To talk. Yeah. When I'm 
around Gabrielle, like I'm extremely nervous. Like my heart beats fast. She's always like, why is your heart beating so fast? I don't know, I didn't help me. <laughs> like, I just get really nervous and giddy. And I mean, when I'm with Gabrielle, I have tons of butterflies. I definitely would have not thought that it would have gotten to this point. Are you romantically involved? <laughs> yes. Gabrielle and I, we have a pretty close relationship. We're really affectionate with each other. We're a little intimate with each other, kind of, sort of. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so cute. Y'all are so corny. It's so cute. <laughs> People be like, y'all are girlfriends, but honest to God, we've already said that we're just friends, and I'm focused on myself, so what? Hey, Angela. <laughs> what? You, you aren't just friends. <laughs> Dude, we are, yo. Pop your collar like grease. Like we haven't admitted to being girlfriends yet. You haven't admitted to each other, but you can talk. You can tell me. Are you in a relationship with Gabby? No. I can't say we're in a relationship. Why? Because we're not. I know, but you guys are extremely affectionate. We are. We are affectionate. We're intimate. I'm not lying to you. I, honest to God, would have never, ever thought that I would have came in here and that I would have developed feelings and emotions towards somebody. I'm romantically involved with Gabrielle. She's awesome. <laughs> in jail covers the action behind the tent, you know what I'm saying? We have tents to contract. It's a sheet that you put up a tent to block the sexual activity that's going on. You know, it's a tent up, so it means something's going down. We talk, <laughs> and we hug, and we kiss. The tent technically is considered a contraband or whatever, so I was like, shit, like I could probably get in trouble for this. But I'm just like, man, you know what, you dude? Well, I'm gonna take this moment and embrace it. You ready? Because I'm ready for this. I can't hide it, I can't fake it, you know? That's why I, I even got to the point where I was like, man, the camera's like, if she wants to lay in my bed, she wants to hold me, hug me, kiss me, whatever, like, let's do it. <laughs> when she started kissing her, I was very shocked. I mean, I know we're in jail, but my goodness. Angel definitely doesn't think about the big picture. I just hope that this puts a smile on Angel's face. Angel's become like my best friend. It's comforting to know that what little light is still burning, somebody else sees it. Running a store, it's a good way to meet new people and gain a lot of influence. And having a little bit extra influence is never a bad thing. <laughs> One of these people that have kind of come to me has been Justin. <laughs> Justin is, if you would describe the pod as a homeless colony, Justin would be the leper of the homeless colony. I mean, he is just a pitiful soul. 
he's indigent, which means you get nothing. You get state-level stuff donated to you and no commissary, nothing like that. If you owe something, you have to pay it back. If you don't pay it back, whatever happens to you happens to you. I just, come here, man. Say right here, I don't like putting down with me. I told you 15 if you had it when you told me, bro. That would have been cool. Then you didn't have it. Then you tell me things that ain't happening. You can sell them trades, bro, and get that money like that. I told you you give me one trade a day. That's for the taxes. I've seen what happens to people when they get into debt inside of jail, and it's absolutely terrible. Justin is extremely vulnerable. They may decide just to beat him down for it. So what you gonna do about my money? I've been sparing you. I really wanna slaughter you. I want my money, man. Get the out of my room. Yeah. Hey, what you doing, man? I need to get out of here. So Justin has started selling his trays, but the interest rate is so high that he'll starve to death before he gets out of debt. So the danger is not only there, but higher than ever. You're a whole ass bitch. Hey, Justin, man, what you gonna do? You think I'm playing, don't you? Put your shoes on, we gonna go with the police. There is a lot of intimidation and, uh, Apparent fear. I get beat up, it makes my call. That's the difference in me being a man and you being a girl. Don't mind going to have to drag you to the butt to start bouncing your head off the door until they come in. It's really just being a bully. They need power because they have none in here. Treat me like a bitch. Treat me like a little whore. I'm supposed to be a bitch. You've been in the door. You've I think I'm playing, don't you? And then you won't even see I have all of this commissary that I'm never going to use, just sitting around, and I could help Justin get out of debt, but would that make me a target simply by getting involved? I don't give a I was just watching and observing. It, it sucks to watch a guy get bullied like that. They were like, come on, get your shoes on, Justin. Let's go. I'm pissed. I want to take it out on somebody. You want to put your shoes on? You're a whole ass bitch. He pressed the button, nobody answered. So I'm not gonna have to start bouncing your head off the door until they come in. Come talk to me. Come on, bro. You ain't no rapist. You, you, you touch me, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna touch you. Go in my room, bro. Come here. Come here. CJ, what up? Go to the whole book, bro. Hey. 
they pull Justin into a sill, and I could just see Justin waiting there for JoJo to come in and kick his ass. I felt sorry for the guy. He was being picked on just so somebody could experience some power, and that's not a reason to treat somebody like they are nothing. I've been sparing you. I really want to slaughter you. I really just want to put my hands on you. You acting like you're not. I know that I'm supposed to stay in my own lane, but it's really hard to just sit and watch this. I really, really sympathize with Justin. So I give Justin three E6 and a honey bun. And uh, he gave it to Jojo, who is angry at the moment. Don't worry about it, y'all. a little bit. But it was still enough to get uh, him out of debt. He's completely fine. Nobody's messed with him since then. And uh, I don't have much longer here, so I'm not worried about anybody giving me a hard time. 